Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with the Money. It's already 10.30 and I'm out at the West Walker River. I hiked like five miles up and down the Truckee for Wilderness with the Money Patreon yesterday. And after the long haul trip on Monday to Ice House Lake, I figured this is a two hour drive, but I can do a lot of fishing, get in my car, drive, fish, rather than just straight hiking. It snowed a fair amount here yesterday, and it was snowing in even Reno where I live. Like, I couldn't start fishing until like 10 yesterday. This water's really suited for spinner fishing, panther martens, and nets, things like that. But I kind of want to stick with these big jigs because with the eighth ounce barbless jigs I'm throwing, I can cast from farther away and not spook the pools because the water here is remarkably clear. And that gets you into trouble when you're fishing in a canyon like this and you have high banks on each side of the river. So it's very hard to sneak down into position without spooking the pole. And I can cast this thing from quite a distance. I'm just looking to catch one good fish today. I had a good day on Monday fishing for YouTube at Ice House Lake. I got multiple fish a few different ways. And I caught one nice brown yesterday for pa Wilderness with Avani Patreon. Let's see if I can close out my three day fishing week with something decent out of the West Walker River. So let's try to get out there and catch at least one fish. And I will fish all day if that's what it takes. So the snow's not a problem. The problem is the ice under the snow. <laughs> that's, that's what I will be falling on today. I expect to fall. I just don't want to get hurt. And I got a lot of experience walking on this stuff, so. But I can see that that is ice all the way down. Got some nice gravel over here. My game plan today is gonna be to not try to get so close to the water. I always seem to spook pools because I, I just wanna get a little bit closer so that I can get the perfect cast in. And I gotta, I got to take some chances and cast from a farther distance back. You know, I always have a plan going in whether I stick to it or not. That's what always remains to be seen. So this first pull I'm fishing is really shallow. And when I'm fishing an eighth ounce jig in shallow water like this, a lot of times I hold my rod almost straight up and down. Because my rod's only five feet, I use really light tackle. So I get my cast in over there, and then by keeping my rod straight up and down, it, it allows me to keep the jig from getting snagged. And I fished yesterday with one jig the whole day. <laughs> and I fished for hours, man. <laughs> so I can... I'm pretty good at getting through the day on, a, on just a single jig, so hopefully I can do that, but sometimes you gotta take some chances, so we'll see. This whole shelf right here is just a sheet of ice with a light dusting of snow on it, so I'm kinda shuffling my way across it. I said I'm probably gonna fall. I don't necessarily want to fall, so let's just get that straight. This right here is going to be a big issue today. I'm snagged on the ice that's under the water. And it's easy to get it off, but I just I just spooked this really good pull trying to get that off. I'm still going to cast, but that sucked. <laughs> Example of what I'm going to try to do today. I'm I'm a I'm a two different patches of ice away from the water. So if I hook something, it's gonna be interesting. But with this eighth ounce jig, I can reach the spots I need to, and you gotta hook it to lose it. So if I hook something, I'll make adjustments. And then I just gotta make sure I rip it over that fringe ice, cause I, I've already been getting snagged on that. So I'm gonna, key, I'm gonna move down and fish that lower section the same way. 
I'm gonna go all the way to the end of the pole and cast far up to reach the water I wanna reach. From no wind to serious wind. Which is making hitting my target near impossible. But I'm just gonna do the best I can. Just muscling it up into that area. But between the floating ice and the wind, this is a tough nut to crack. And I'm coming up short. I don't know. It's windy though. The wind just came up out of nowhere and it is just howling up the canyon. And to cut and run from the canyon between this ice on the edges, the heavy wind gusting and chunks of ice floating in the river that keep on messing up my presentation. It's time to go downstream to where there's not so much ice. In fact, it's almost ice free if you go down a ways. And again, it's not my ideal water, but I'm getting whooped by these conditions up in this canyon. It's got me out in that fast water. It looks like a brown. I moved down to this area where there's not so much. Got him. So there he is in the net. The jig already fell out. It's a nice brown, beautiful fish. And I got him in this current. I'm just letting the current go over him. Even though this water is really cold. But I moved down the canyon and I'm in an area of the river now where there's just that ice was killing me. Up the canyon more, there was so much floating ice and so much ice around the edges. It was just driving me crazy. Because when you hit that floating ice, it seems like, uh, it feels like a bite. It's a beautiful fish right there. Look at that beautiful brown trout. It's a good fish. Let's get him in. There he goes. Back out to his icy lair. I'm on the board. He was in the tail end of the pool. So they're not always right up under the waterfall. Sometimes you're gonna get him at that tail end and that's where he was hanging out. All right, I think it's time to drive. But there's still ice on a lot of these rocks, but it's not like it was up, up the canyon a ways. And if we go down a little farther, I don't think there's gonna be any ice. There's only one way down this icy, steep, crumbly slope. I gotta find where I came in, because I plotted out a safe course. No need to take any risks <laughs> if I don't need to. I'm supposed to switch into a panther because I'm gonna start hitting some shallower water soon. But this jig is ideal because I can cast this all the way up into that white water if I keep it low enough to keep it under that tree and I don't have to get close to the areas I want to fish so I don't spook the pool. And now that the wind has stopped, I can drop this thing anywhere I need to. I'm gonna wrap it up. The sun's coming down in this canyon. It's getting really cold. I still got some daylight, but I got a long drive home still. And I think I spent too much time getting frustrated up in that ice. I should have come down to where there was no ice, and then I should have stuck to that plan where I was gonna start throwing a Panther Martin across the shallows. But I didn't, I'm stubborn. And I stayed up there and I was getting snagged and I was shouting out foul language that I'm not, that won't make this tape. But whatever, man. I got one fish. It wasn't an explosive day on the West Walker. But then again, it's freezing and there's ice floating in the river, so I don't, I don't know how good that is to get the fish active and get them biting. I wanted to get up here before a lot of the snow starts melting. You know, it's mid-February. Once that snow starts melting, this river's gonna be raging. And I wanted to get here before that happened, but the ice is still too much. But it was fun. I caught a nice brown, 
It was a beautiful fish. So I hope you enjoyed the West Walker River. Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with the Bonnie. Until next time.